the friend that I'm interviewing in Jackson who helped me out. He's very kind to do this. Uh, I'll take him out to lunch because... Check your pockets, check everything on you, every five seconds if you have to. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Can you tell me your name, your age, and where you were born? My name is Emil Bekarov, 20 years old, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, baby. Simple as that. Uh, my name is Andrei Mashenko. I'm 21 years old, and I was born in Kiev, Ukraine. Hi, my name is Bozana Fostolorska. I'm 21 years old, and I was born in Ukraine. Lutsk, Ukraine. Uh, where is that? Like the west side. Don't remember exactly, but the west side. <laughs> okay. Near Poland. Poland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm Sasha Bekarova, also known as Alexandra. I am 21 years old and I was born in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Cool. Uh, who named you? Uh, probably my mom. I was named after my uncle, her brother. Okay. Alexander. <laughs> Sasha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you like your name? Don't like Alexander, I like Sasha. I think it was my father, but my parents, I know they came to like a mutual agreement for a meal. For a while when I was a kid, I didn't like my name. Uh, I just thought it sounded weird. I didn't sound American enough. Or like, I, I wanted to change my name to Jack for a while. But over time, I kind of realized it was different. Nobody else is named Emil. Who named me? The newspaper actually because my parents didn't didn't know what to name me they really couldn't come up with the name they weren't really set on anything so my dad looked at the newspaper and on the day on the day i was born he looked at the newspaper to see what like like saints were something something christian and the choices were uh andre ivan and constantin and they were like andre just choose andre my mom, um, she wanted another child and then nobody wanted her, I guess, to have one because they thought she was too like old for her age. So um, when she had me, she realized she was pregnant with me. She named me Bodana, Bogdana, like God given. So definitely my mom. Cool. Uh, do you like your name? I love it. I want to keep it. <laughs> when I was younger, I did want to change it. Uh, so, so I went to the Pope and I was like, can I change my name? From like I wanted to change it to Rose from Titanic, but <laughs> I don't know why. He was like, "Are you sure you want to do that? Come back to me in like two weeks." And then you know I was like seven, six, so I fully forgot about it. But I love my name. It's definitely unique. I get a lot of compliments on it. And, like it's close to me. It means a lot to me. So I I'm very happy with my name. Nice. Uh, can you describe your first home? It was tiny. <laughs> we lived on the eighth floor. There was a very, we had two elevators. I'm terrified of elevators because I always get stuck in them and they were so old. Um, small kitchen, like one table and like two counters. And literally, that was all. So we'd all sit there and eat together, all five of us. Um, two rooms, one like living room and the other one was just like a regular room and a small bathroom. And uh, we had like those beds that like open up, mm -hmm. like couches, cushions, couches, couches. Well, okay, my first home was actually my uncle's apartment because he moved here into the States in 1995 and they were living in Co-op City in the Bronx and when my parents moved here, you know, they had like, what, 300 bucks to their name? So they used that to buy clothes, food, and like some shoes and they lived with my uncle for a bit until we were able to afford our own place. So that was my first home. The first home I had 
was on um, Avenue U and I think East 13th Street in Brooklyn, if I remember that right. My great-grandmother moved to America, I think, in the 50s, 60s. Essentially, what happened was everyone just came to her apartment and we stayed there. We lived upstairs right next door to her. I can't remember much, but it was a beat-up place. We had a nice little, I guess, a little garage space, a little driveway. Really small, not the best neighborhood. Everything was run down, but it was peaceful. Look back at it childishly. So, I don't think my brother was born yet. Um, I don't think Emil was born yet. Um, it was like Avenue U, East 13th Street. Like, we lived here up until maybe, I think until Emil was born. Um, and then we moved upstairs and it was, I don't, I don't remember much from it. I think we only stayed there until I was five. We actually had a break, break in downstairs. <laughs> I remember that pretty vividly. It's peaceful. Do they steal a lot of stuff? They stole a lot of my grandma's stuff. Damn. Like this, this uh, necklace is actually like one of the last few things that, you know, that they didn't take. So. Um, what do you remember the most from your first home? I remember the most. My um, my great aunt, or we call my great grandma, her like smell. She had this like very like grandma smell. Okay. Yeah, it's weird, but that's I don't remember much from it. Nothing like visual, but it's just she was very homey. She she was a great woman. What was your first language? I think it was Russian. If I remember right, it really was Russian because nobody in my house except my grandma knew Russian as well. Uh, English as well. My grandma was an English professor in Tashkent or just somewhere in Uzbekistan. I English learned... professor? English professor. She taught me how to read and write in, uh, in Russian just because everyone in the house was talking in Russian so it was like might as well. Like my parents were still learning English at the time. I remember especially when I was like four or five going into school I was learning both at the same time. So there was no first or second it was just always both. Ukrainian. You still speak at home? Yeah. We only speak Ukrainian at home. I find it actually easier to speak Ukrainian than Russian, too. Russian. Russian. I didn't speak until maybe I was like three, so I started speaking very late. Russian first and then English, yeah. Okay. But both still very late. So who taught you Russian? Oh, my grandma, of course. Yeah? <laughs> Did you know any English when you came here? None. Actually, actually, when I knew we were moving here, I was watching Dora the Explorer thinking it was English <laughs> while it was <laughs> Spanish, but I still didn't learn anything. Up until daycare, I guess I don't really remember much, you know, and then when I got to daycare, uh, I went to a Russian daycare, right, where the teachers all spoke Russian to the kids, you know, taught us Russian and English. You know, there was some kid named Chris, and he was very much not Russian. You know, so I spoke English with him, but then at home I spoke Russian, so there wasn't really like a first. It's kind of just both at the same time. Do you remember your grandparents? Of course. I see her every day. I live with her at the moment. And, um... What's her name? Lilia Tosikova. What do you call her? Babulia. <laughs> I call her Babulia. Um... That's right.
it's like, cause she all, she lived right downstairs from us in that first home, but then we moved to Bergen Beach. It was a little far, but she would come see us every single day, you know, take care of us, feed us, make sure we were doing homework, make sure this, that, like nanny type stuff, I guess, till we moved to the city. Always stopped by whenever I visited and always like went out of my way just to see her as much as I could. Still do. So, well, my grandpa on my other, on my dad's side, I met him one time, very like humble, humble guy. Um, he's tall, he's like 6'3 or something. So like he and I always connected over sports because he played like volleyball in college, I think. My grandma, like I grew up with her, she's my best friend. Um, like we've, she's picked me up from school, she's driven me to tennis, like we grew up with her. But yeah, I remember my grandparents, I still see my dad's parents very often. They're, they live here in the States, but my mom's side, the entirety of my mom's side lives in Ukraine still. Uh, but we communicate with them through Skype and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I can't really say that I don't know them. My dad's side, there's my grandma. I never met my grandpa, but she did come visit before. Uh, my mom's side, I have both of my grandparents. And I remember them because, I mean a lot, because I spent a lot of time in their village. And we would always like go and like milk cows, you know, pick up eggs after the chickens, let the dog loose. We had a corn field, a potato field. So I remember them very clearly. And I still talk to them. Uh, who raised you? Both my parents. Both your parents? Both my parents. Babula. Without a doubt. Babula. She, not to say my parents didn't do anything, because I, I can't say that, I can't say they weren't a part of that. She was always there, because she was there every single day while my parents were at work. She was there watching me, making sure I was fed, this, make sure I was doing my homework, make sure I was there, making sure I had done everything I needed to do. Always supported me through everything, taught me, how I should behave, who I should be like. Definitely my mom. Well, both of my parents. But mostly my mom because when I was four, three, I was very young. My dad moved to America first. And we all came here like in 2008. But I spent most of my time, like especially being younger, you know, when you're like supposed to be growing up and learning stuff with my mom. I don't think I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. I think my mom was just with us all the time. Who raised me? Um, myself. <laughs> my dad and my grandma played the biggest role. I mean, obviously, like, I love my mom. My mom's always been there for me, but my dad would always drive me to tournaments. Um, he'd always drive me to practice. My mom, she'd always get so anxious and nervous when, when she was watching me, she, was, she would never come. My grandma, yeah, like, she would just pick me up from lunch. Like, she was my best friend. She taught me, like, English, Russian. Uh, she helped me with, like, all my schoolwork, so. I would say my grandma definitely played one of the biggest roles. What traits did you uh, pick up from your mom? The most prominent traits. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about my mom. I know my grandma. I'm definitely copying my grandma. My parents, they'd be like, you're just like your grandma. Like stubborn. You, once you say you want something to be, like it's going to have to be your way. Like, you know, very hard headed. And I was like, okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Are no. you proud of that? Yeah, definitely. I'm got me far, I think, and I definitely feel like it'll help me a lot more within the next year or two. Like, I'm just glad to have that because I can have a goal and I know how to do it, like, no matter how difficult it is. What is your first memory of being in school? School. This is very unlikely. Like, I went there, I was pissed. I was just... <laughs> like the most livid little kid, I didn't say a word to anybody. Did like, you ever get like in fights when you were little? Not really. I was always peaceful like that. Like I did martial arts, long time. This one time, I don't know why I did it. I was on the playground after school, and this kid was bothering me. I don't, I don't remember what he said, but he was just pissing me off. I just clock him right in the nose, <laughs> and then he's crying, standing there just sobbing his eyes out, and I'm like. I gotta go, and my grandma's sitting there talking to his grandma, and I'm like, Babuna, we, we gotta go. And she's like, oh, hang on, like 10 minutes. I'm like, no, I'm really hungry. We think we should go. I was always peaceful like that. Uh, what was your first school in Ukraine? Oh, it was also close to my house, very close. I just remember, like, 
I took this path. It wasn't a real street. It was like bushes. <laughs> Me walking through the field. And then I went to school. I did have a uniform. I still have it at home, actually. Because my mom was like, I'm never throwing it out. That's a memory. And it was very, very European. We had like, um, Bachelors Vinok, like first day of classes. And like all the parents like line up outside the school with the students. And the flowers. Yeah, and the flowers and the bow ties, the bind tiki, mm -hmm. and me in my little uniform. What do you remember most about um, your school experience in Ukraine? Oh, wow. Let me tell you. So, second grade, I am sitting there and I do not understand. Like, math was not my good subject until I really moved here. And I don't know what clicked in me all of a sudden, but. My, my math teacher, she was just rude. And I guess because she felt comfortable because we lived in the same building, she was always harsh on me. She, we took an exam and like, there's no such a like thing as like dismissing you at a specific time. So I was taking this test. I usually leave school like at four, I would think. And she made me sit there till 7 p.m. one time in school because I couldn't solve a math problem. Somehow I managed to do it. I was hysterical, I remember that. She, and it was literally just me and this other girl across me and she was my good friend. And then she left and I was left all alone and till 7 p.m. That was horrible because of a stupid math test I couldn't do. And I still did bad. Daycare, I was in the blue room, which is for two-year-olds, and I was shrugging my shoulders at the teacher because she would tell me to not cut with scissors because she was teaching us to cut with scissors but I already knew how to cut with scissors. And then my first memory of school school was um, meeting my kindergarten teacher, Miss K. Cool. Uh, can you tell me more about her? No. All right. I guess this is just going to show my character, not in a good way, <laughs> but there was this... Um, there was this girl that I didn't like in pre-K, um, and then there was my friend. <laughs> um, this girl, like, she wants to come, the one that I don't like, she wants to come and sit next to me. Like, as she's sitting down, I, like, take this chair from under her, and this poor girl hits her head on the table and then, like, back. Like, she, she was fine, you know, but I definitely, I definitely got in a lot of trouble because <laughs> then, like, I'm, like, picking up this chair, like, just looking at her. And I just pass it to the other hand, like just give it to my friend. <laughs> and they're like, yo. Did you ever go on vacation with your family? A lot. We traveled a lot, like like especially when I got a little older, we traveled like through Europe, stuff like that. Like Italy, we went there a lot. France, Spain, Portugal, we went once. Uh, we went to Crimea once. It almost felt like home. Like I belonged there. Like Almost. So Almost. you say you definitely call New York your home? Yeah. Brooklyn. Brooklyn's, Brooklyn's home. home. Brooklyn baby. That's me. We're very fortunate uh, to have traveled so much. We went everywhere. <laughs> like we went to a lot of places like Europe, Caribbean, Mexico at one point. Well, my parents love to travel. We don't really go far. Like I've never, okay, I've never been to Ukraine with my whole family. Like at the same time. Um, I've been with each of my family members in Ukraine, just not all at the same time. Most of our trips are ski trips. You know, we go up to like, up, like somewhere upstate or Canada, great skiing on Whiteface, you know. Uh, we, we like to enjoy our winters, because here it sucks. Yeah. Winters here are garbage. Yeah. What do you miss about the States when you go abroad? Do I even miss anything? <laughs> I don't think so. I like New York. I love New York. I miss New York, but otherwise, like... That's a tough question. I haven't even thought about that. What do I miss about the States? Yeah, when you go on vacation. Um, I guess I'm just really used to the food here. So whenever I go abroad, it's not... It doesn't have, like, that American... Standard. Standard to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it's because a lot of things in America are, enhanced, like, flavor-enhanced. Like, milk, for example. This is not milk. It's like sugar milk. You know, it doesn't taste milky at all. 
Uh, well, that's one thing I don't miss. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what things about America took a while for you to get used to? People. Very different. Like the relationships that you build with your own people are always more genuine, always more, especially with like Russians, it's just immediate. You meet a Russian person, like that, like you know, like, like even if you're not on good terms, you know them, you know, you know them like the back of your hand. Like especially when you know it's like with your own people, very quick, very like, okay, like I'll give you everything, you give me everything, we have an equal partnership in that sense because we're brothers and that or whatever you want to think about it. Um, bullets blocky um <laughs> scuola okean so she людей певно а або магазини а що а з людьми зв'язано з людьми то що як вони ми по-іншому вдівалися у мене волосся по-іншому було ми по-іншому ходили якось знаєш тут всі так швидко ходять біжуть туди-сюди а ми там собі спокійно ще можемо там собі сісти кудись this one thing, I don't know if it was me having trouble to get used to, but not so much mannerism, but like food. Like I would bring something, you know, smelly, not like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, obviously, but not like some kind of sandwich. It was always some, I don't know, kalbasa or like, um, what else, like sasiski, like, you know, not even like, I'm, I'm making them sound very Russian. They're not Russian, but like just the way that it was, created i guess i wouldn't know i don't know if this is an american thing but i find it much easier just to talk to people in ukraine you know like randomly you know especially around people my age our age you know like um if like i feel like it's just much harder to approach people our age here in america you know like it, like if unless there's a reason don't talk to anybody i don't know if it's just a new york thing you know but i found it hard to make friends on a whim. Каким вещам ты до сих пор не привыкла с Америки? Я не привыкла до того, як не то, що не привыкла, мене просто воно роздражає, як люди просто так все якось не всі, но багато хто все сприймає так, якби не серйозно, як все як якийсь як прикол для них, like, що все, всі тут такі, о, oh, whatever, ха-ха, таке, що все буде так і так, і щось я придумаю, ну, трошки треба, я думаю, серйознішим бути, знаєш. Я не привик а, к тому, що а, тут, як как би, бы, центральних морал, і навіть якщо вони є, вони не допомагають всім, наприклад, в, в в Китае, в Японии, где все про, про, про родственников думают. Ты работаешь сильно, чтобы своих родственников как бы благодарить и радовать их. Ты их радуешь, потому что они тоже очень сильно работали, потому что без них ты бы здесь не был. Здесь в этой стране нету. I dealt with a lot more negative American type people than I have with Russians or with people of my own culture. Well, you do have a smaller sample size to begin with. That's true. That's that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah, I've dealt with less, but at the same time, I've dealt with a lot more negative, like, interactions with people who aren't of my own. It's not the same. It takes a little bit more work and adjusting to get used to. Yeah, you know. So, like, we started going out a lot recently, especially, like, with the pandemic um, ending and, you know, restrictions loosening up. We started going out and we're just like, we, you can see, like, who's the American that's been here for like six generations and who's like the the immigrant <laughs> like you could just tell and like we laugh at the Americans I think Americans are just stuck up too really I think so very stuck up not everyone but a lot not everyone it's, but it's, I think a lot it's prominent here как реагируют люди когда ты им говоришь что ты русский или украинец О, сука! Каждый раз. Каждый раз. Каждый раз. Я уже привык к этому. Ага, да. 
скотина. Мне мама или папа звонят по телефону, и я с ним по-русски разговариваю. Они говорят, ого, ты знаешь, по какому языке ты разговариваешь? Ты, ты, what? Ты... Some people assume, some people just tell by my mannerisms, by the way I look. Usually it's like, Russian. You know, they, they, they pull back a second, like, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> like, a lot of people just ask about, oh, do you speak? Oh, you speak? Are you from here? Oh, you're, you're, you're from here? It's usually just general, oh, really? When did you move here? Where are you from? This, where are your family from? Do you speak? Are you this? Don't you do this? How do you... Babushka, right? <laughs> You know? <laughs> <laughs> when did you start considering yourself uh, an American, if you consider yourself an American? I definitely do. I think maybe right after high school, when I had the chance to go away for college. And it's like, you know, I went to Binghamton University, which is just like a good, like it's a great school. It's something new. I was the first one in my family to do it. Like my siblings never went away for college. It's like, you know, the American kind of like dream. And then uh, 2016, I think, or 15, I got my citizenship. But like, it's, I still felt like very attached to like Ukraine. But I guess because now I got more freedom going to college and stuff, I definitely feel American now. I would call myself American too. Even the way I talk and I act, like different. Different mm -hmm. from like European cultures, I would say. Well, I definitely don't think I'm American. Oh, that's interesting. Um, you were born here though, right? Yeah, like I, it's, I don't, it's I don't, very interesting. like, I, I think, like, I just see so many differences between, like, me and my American friends, and I'm like, I'm definitely not that. Okay, this is funny. When I moved here, I was supposed to be, like, in second grade, going to third grade, elementary school, so they, I mean, the teachers are being nice, I guess. They put me in a kindergarten classroom, so I was, like, the only big giant there sitting crisscross <laughs> applesauce trying to figure out how to write English and read English. And it was just, like, the basics, like, the alphabet and all. And I felt like I was a little bit left out because I wanted to be with the older kids, and I was, like, the only one sitting there, and they're all, like, in kindergarten. I'm just like, hmm. Did you have a hard time when you first moved here? Uh, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Uh, I, th I mean, I was also just young and overwhelmed by everything. But I did have this thing happen to me when I first moved here. I thought my heart was hurting me. Like I had like, like something was, how do you say, like my, spiking, not spiking, but like poking my heart. Yeah. And I got nervous because I was so overwhelmed and like it was different atmosphere, like different streets, like different people, different clothing. There was no uniform. So they called an ambulance. <laughs> And they took me to the hospital because I was so overwhelmed. Meanwhile, I was completely okay. But I definitely think I had like a difficulty at first adjusting and stuff. Um, did you play sports or do any activities outside of school as a kid? First thing, the first sport or out of school activity I did was uh, tennis. Yet again, just another one of my parents' mutual friends. This guy's name was Igor. And he was lit he was he's probably the reason why I ha why I have the discipline I have right now because this guy was hardcore, hardcore Russian tennis coach, you know, um, I like know. he called like call us names, call us garbage, hit us with tennis balls, boom. So that was really fun. <laughs> What kind of music did you listen to as a kid, if you remember? Victor Tsui, big fan of Elvis Presley for the longest time. I got into Frank Sinatra, Little Richard, Dean Martin a little bit. Just the works. You know, so it went from dubstep to rap, and then I discovered Nirvana, and I was like, sucks he died, you know. But I would always grow up around uh, Kino and... Um, the best. Yeah, the best. Kino, let's see who else, uh, Alex Kripka. DDT? Huh? DDT. Yeah. So I do have a fair share of Russian songs in my Spotify playlist. Same. But most of it is American, you know. Only Russian music, only, well not even Russian, only Soviet music. A lot of my dad's uh, classic Q1043 class rock. <laughs> Kino was a big one, Viktor Tsoi. I love it. That was, that was a big dude in our family. Like Emil, my brother, is like obsessed. Both um, me and him are equally obsessed, I'd say. Emil, did you grow up with Soviet cartoons and films? 
Ну погоди, кот Леополь, I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot. Как капитан Брунгель, ирония судьбы или с легким паром. Служебный роман, блин, what else? Москва слезам не верит, is my favorite. I did watch a lot of American TV too. As much as I was watching Nuk Bagadi, I was also watching as much Spongebob. My parents told me if I watched Spongebob, my brain would fry itself. You know, same, my parents absolutely hated Spongebob, but I'd wake up like Saturday morning with my sister, we'd just run to the TV, turn whatever was on, and it'd just be a good time. I miss those days. So we'd have a bunch of VHSs of like Nuk Bagadi yep. or uh, Nizhnaika cartoons about like Russian fairy tales. You know. No, pagadi. <laughs> no, zayat. Pagadi. Pagadi. Are we talking about like no pagadi? No, zayat. Pagadi. Ah, uh, uh, what else? Ah, uh, Winnie Pooh. Mm. Really, I even say it like in Ukrainian, and the English is like Winnie Pooh. Tom and Jerry, but like the Ukrainian version, mm-hmm. is really good. That's basically no pagadi. Da. Comparing your Slavic friends to your American friends. Yeah. Big difference. A lot of my Slavic friends, um, it's like a siblinghood. Most of them I met when I was a child, and most of them are friends from daycare. And they're not really my friends, they're the children of my parents' friends, you know? And it just so happened we got along. We were in the same circle before we could speak. So that's how deep our friendship goes. Mm-hmm. New people that are Slavs, you know, like Emil, for example, right? The second we find out we're Slavs, it's like an instant connection. I yeah, don't know yeah. what it is. You know, but I guess as like kin of sorts, we inherently have some of the same experiences, you know, so the way we think is like very similarly, you know, um, the way we think, the way we see the world, the way we see the problems, the way we deal with problems, you know, the way, the things we laugh at, you know, uh, life experiences, you know, also really easy for me to talk about uh, deeper things like personal things. Another big difference between Slavic friends and I guess American friends is that Slavic friends have a great appreciation of the natural world and the natural order of things. Um, Mainly, I guess, it's because we're superstitious. It's easy to be like, yo, you want to go on a hike? Yeah. So how am I supposed to get in? One second, sorry, I'm trying to figure this thing out. I think you can only enter from uh, that side. So I should make another loop now? Oh, man. Hopefully you don't run out of gas. No, I won't, but it's just confusing with these streets. Okay, fine, we'll go around again. Um, another difference is uh, Slavic friends don't ask questions. It's like, let's do this, okay. You know, or it's like American friends, let's do this, why? It's almost like an established brotherhood, like immediately, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like when it comes to Americans, you know, it's like you, you have to earn that almost. I don't like to put on different social masks. Mm-hmm. I just want to be myself. I just want to be comfortable, Love you know? That. I want I want to make a fart joke <laughs> if I want to, you know, without people being like, Ew, you still make fart jokes? Like, yeah, I do, they're not funny. You're weird, you know? I noticed that my American friends try to be adult as much as possible. And I'm like, why would you do that? You're fucking 18 years old. You're 19 years old. Chill out, you know? Stop trying to flex your adult muscles at me. Like, you don't have to impress me, you know? And then, like, when I'm not doing the same, it's like, you're a bum. Like, no, I'm not a bum. You're my friend. Why should I show off to you, you know? Okay, um, we were saying, what were we... Uh, what do you look for in a friend? Somebody that can like, you know what it is? I don't have to text you all the time, but I'll text you randomly and you like, you know what I'm talking about already. Like, let's go hang out, let's go do this. Kind of like help each other out. Not to be selfish, I guess, in a way. Like if you know some information or you have like a job and like, you know, I'm looking for a job, like help me out, you know? Like you're not selfish, you're caring. You are literally just knock on my door randomly. Like we can, I can tell you my secret or like something like that's important to me. Know that you won't go tell like even my other close friend because it has to stay between us. Like trust, I guess, respect, very important. Because sometimes like a friend will just use you up and then just be like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, blah, blah. I don't know. Um, that they're a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that's not gonna compete with me. You know, being competitive, I attract a lot of that. Um, so it's always like one upping me. There was always like a lot of tension, like in my high school friendships, especially where it's always like trying to one up me or, um, you know, female drama. Как бы ты различил американского друга и 
русскоговорящего. Когда с, американским, э, с американскими людьми общаюсь или когда дружу с ними, я всегда знаю, что можно сразу этот блат потерять. У меня многие есть друзья, которые не русские, которые, я считаю, даже близки, э, самые мои близкие друзья, они американские люди, понимаешь? Но я до сих пор знаю, что ради ради всего угодного, понимаешь, могу сразу этот блат потерять. Потому что американские люди на самом деле не самые реальные. Не все? Но... Не все, не все. Можно сказать, что не все. Но с русскими всегда, всегда было лучше дружить, потому что, да, в первую очередь, это моя культура. Можно посидеть, чай выпить, в дурака поиграть, когда угодно. Ты с другом, который тебя полностью понимает. Но с американскими людьми им как это легче обманывать, легче тебе в лицо плюнуть, показать тебе улыбку, как будто бы они ничего не сделали. You know, like I do have days where I'm like, yeah, let's swim to Africa, you know. But then I do have days, but then I also have days where I'm like, just pretend I don't exist. Let's say, let's use the term social chameleons, right? If they're having a bad day, you know, they're like. Let's see what they do. They almost like show signs that they're having a bad day and wants to attract attention. But the second they get it and you ask like, hey, what's wrong? Is it this? They're like, yo, bro, you're getting too personal right now. You know, we're friends, you know, like you could talk. That's what friends are for, you know, like chill out. Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like people are scared to be friends, mm. like real friends. Again, that's just from my experience. It's yeah. not. You know, ever I don't I don't think everybody goes through that, but that's just me. Yeah. yeah. Which memory always makes you smile? That's gonna take me a second, I gotta think. Pleasant childhood memory. <laughs> my grandma feeding me all the time. Also, I used to go to my attic, like um, my grandma's house in the village, because like, I spent a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. I used to go to a cornfield, and I used to, you know how like the corn stay, when they were like, roll, like closed up, they have like, um, kind of like, it looks like hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to pretend like I was a hairstylist, and I would always steal all the corn. <laughs> And they get really mad at me and just like take the scissors and like cut their hair. Когда я пробовал кушать хлеб, макать в, в, в яблочный сок, мне это очень нравилось. Я это делал с клюквенным соком и квасом. С квасом, с квасом, блять, о oh май гад. Oh, <laughs> okay. This is going to take a minute of explaining. So there's this Ukrainian dish. It's called ucha. Uh -huh. It's like fish, fish soup. soup. Yeah, fish soup. Ucha. There's a Ukrainian curse word that goes ahu yellow. Um, my mom went to Ukraine for some reason like six years ago. And we were left alone with my dad for the first time ever. Three kids, my dad alone in America. So he goes to like these Russian supermarkets to buy homemade cooked food because he's not obviously going to cook soup and stuff. And then we had Ucha left at home before my mom left. So my dad goes to me, Bogdana, Bogdana, a te I really like that, like waking up in that house in Bergen Beach, sun shining through my room, like looking out the window, everyone's running outside, grass is green, it smells good. Are you religious? I was never like religious, religious. But for a long time, I did believe in God and believe that there was Eastern Orthodox. Yeah. Yeah. My, my grandma's is highly religious. I won't ever tell her. Whatever she tells me to do religious-wise, I still do it. That's out of culture. That's not out of because I believe that God's there doing the thing for me. It's just purely out of respect for her. And it's like... I take away the religious aspect of it in my head. I think, okay, this is part of my culture. This mm -hmm. is part of what we do. Not really. I mean, I have my own God, but I don't wear a cross like you. I used to. 
Uh, but then I tried to pray and it didn't work out. And then I prayed to like mother nature and it worked out. So I'm more pagan than anything. Uh, definitely fading away. I, I am Christian fully, yes. Uh, do I go to church as often as I used to? No, should I fix that? A hundred percent. I mean, just like, you know, like it's very typical in America. You have to focus on like yourself kind of like getting yourself up on your feet, being financially stable and stuff. Like, I mean, it was also much like it was easier in Ukraine when you have your whole family there. And here in America, it's just like us five. Now here it's like a busy life. The one thing though, I do pray before I go to sleep every night. Like that's, I feel like that's one thing I took away with me which still I consider like a lot for myself. I do forget to pray sometimes before I go to sleep, but I do it. When I was little, um, we went to, my, my mom's, my mom's brother died when he was very young. So like every year we go to the church, we go to light a candle. Um, maybe I was like six or seven at this point. And the Bajushka, he comes up to me, he's like, where's your cross? Like, you know, this is a sin, this and that. And I'm just looking at him like, Yo, I'm like six years old, like, get off my back. So since then, I like kind of didn't like want to be associated with it or anything. Cause my, my dad's, my dad's dad, he's Muslim, Crimean, Chimsky Tatar. So um, definitely like causes, I would, I would say like some rift between the family. Sure. Um, my dad has always, he's like me, he's like, I don't want to be associated with, with any of these. Like I'm just my own person. Like I remember when I was little, he would tell me like, you know, like, my heaven's, like, here on earth. Are you superstitious? Mm. Well, there's just one very specific thing mm -hmm. that, you know how it is. If you do one thing wrong, like, if you whistle in the house, like, you lose all your money. Everything's losing all your money. Um... The only superstition I actively and actively don't believe in, and I'm sure you know it, like the whistling in the house, right? You don't believe in it. I don't, because, so whistling in the house, uh, the common belief is that you lose money, Yeah. right? Yeah. The only reason I don't believe that, I was at home in Bergen Beach, and I'm whistling in the house because I finally figured out how to do it. And my dad comes up to me, he's like a meal. The superstition goes that if you know he explains it and that same day this family friend of ours right comes to the house and she hadn't seen me in a while and she goes Emil I missed your birthday here hands me an envelope with like 30 50 dollars in it after whistling all day ever since that day I don't believe in that superstition very like if you step on my foot I have to step on your like you have to step on mine you know like uh, can't split poles uh, don't eat at the, don't sit at the corner of a table, don't eat food off a knife, you know, when you finish the bottle of wine, blow into it, close it, you know, do all that. Um, every time you take a shot, it has to be a toast. Black cats, ladders, all that stuff. Broken um, mirrors. Tu, 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 you know, soil over the, if you spill salt, you know, very superstitious. It works. It does work. It does, it, do, it works, <laughs> you know, it's real. Like, um, so the thing, oh, and don't whistle indoors. Same. Don't you'll whistle be, You'll door. be poor. Yep, you'll be poor. You'll lose your money. That one and the foot thing. So the foot thing, right? Okay, well, the foot thing, it's, it's complicated with that because <laughs> if I don't mention it, you know, a problem between the two people still arises, right? Because okay, if, I, if I step on your foot, you know, we're going to have beef. And then I'm like, just step on my foot again. We'll be good, you know? And then some people are like, whatever, you know, and just step on my foot over it, right? But then like, if I step on somebody's foot and I'm like, I'm so sorry, step on my foot, you know? And they're just like, why? I'm like, just superstition, just do it. Like, no questions, like, please don't ask questions, you know? And then there's an argument that starts there. And, I'm, and they're like, you see, this is what happens. You caused the problem. I'm like, no, no, you're just not listening, you know? It's bigger than that. I used to have a friend in high school whose, whose foot I stepped on, you know? And then he wouldn't step on my foot back, you know? I was like, why, why wouldn't you do this? You know, and then we ended up getting to an argument and he's no longer my friend. No, she's no longer my friend, sorry. When do you switch to Russian? To the language or to being the Russian? Language, the, language. the language. Well, however you want to answer that, actually. In Brooklyn, for one, just like when I'm comfortable at home with family, with people like you that make me comfortable, like 
even in even in English I'll just break into a couple Russian phrases here and there just because it'll work for the situation a lot better than an English word. Когда я разговариваю с семьей, то есть мама, папа, бабушка, дедушка, я с ними по русски разговариваю. Когда я когда я ударяюсь, то есть если я где-то хожу и вот, например, я в лоб что-то ударил, это ай блин, просто натурально выходит. Я не знаю почему. Когда я когда я злой, когда меня что-то раздражает. So Ukrainian all the time with my parents at home, grandparents, Skype, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, whatever it's called. Well, my brother usually Ukrainian, my sister usually English, my mom definitely Ukrainian, my dad definitely Ukrainian. Only with my friends and in school, English. Even when like I'm talking to Russian people, I just tell them right away like I prefer to speak Ukrainian because it's easier for me. But like I'll, I'll talk to like in Russian. They just know my Russian isn't great. Oh my God, when I'm mad, I'm a hothead. Especially when I'm on court. Recently, I've started to speak way more Russian than usual because, like, if I if I'm gonna curse in English, and my coach understands me, so I better curse in Russian. But now he knows, so like, <laughs> I've like spoken too much already in Russian. I think it's just a more intimidating language. So. It feels like the most natural. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, obviously, with my grandma, always. Um, she tries to keep it alive, and I, I appreciate that very much. Мои родители очень хотят, чтобы я женился на русской девушке. Твои родители тоже ну, хотят, чтобы ты так был? Или... Сначала да. Сначала они хотели, чтобы я на украинке женился. Потому что украинке, они, да. они все считают, что украин... украинки самые красивые женщины. Но они все похожи на мою сестру и маму. Я это не могу делать. Слишком мой... много Фройда читал. Да. Ну, смотря как мои родители хотят, я... То есть они знают, что мне нравятся испанские девушки. Мне, мне нравится культура, мне нравится, как они выглядят. Мне нравится язык, мне нравится еда, мне нравятся танцы. Um, они с ним... Мне, мне, с ним, мне с ними очень легко. Э, точно, чтобы кринец был. Но э, мы как-то начали понимать то, что, like, Мені, якщо людина хороша, розумна, вона добре, до мене добре відноситься до сім'ї, вони готові приймати навіть американця чи когось іншого там. Ну, звичайно, хотіло б, щоб була українська людина, знаєш? Mm-hmm. Щоб було хтось близький до тебе, щоб ти зміг з ними говорити, і діти виросли б так само. Але вони б хотіли українця, але вони розуміють, що певно такого не буде. Бо я вже тут живу, я вже не знаю, не так же багато українців я теж. Точно, точно. Я точно думаю, не українець буде, але було б ідеально, щоб був українець. Who are your role models? Bernard Purdy, Maxim Galkin, <laughs> Michael Phelps, Frederick Douglass, Cynthia from Pokemon. Okay, Bernard Purdy Purdy is a really very good and very famous drummer. He's been on over 4,000 albums. And he, came, if, if anybody's out there a drummer, you know who Bernard Purdy is, right? The reason he's one of my role models is not because he came up with the, the Purdy Shuffle, but it's because he has this attitude towards music, right? He does it because he loves it, you know? And, uh, and he's so good at it, you know? So seeing him be so good at something he loves so much makes me want to find something that I love as much as he loves drumming. Frederick Douglass, mainly because he was the diamond, in, not the diamond, but the black sheep amongst the herd, quite literally, you know. Um, he was very outspoken. He didn't want to keep his mouth shut, and we're still learning about him today. Michael Phelps, GOAT, yeah. right? Easy, I used to swim. I got a lot of my backstroke technique from him. Even though he's a butterfly swimmer, um, his backstroke is insane. And I noticed the way he cups his hand is like, just nuts, you know? Um, and the, the way he cups his hand and turns his elbow, you know, it increases the surface area that's going through the water. 
So he's the reason why my backstroke is insane. Cynthia, because she's a badass. She's really strong, right? And her perception in the Pokemon world is divine, almost, right? And the way she sees the Pokemon world is the way I see the natural world, right? Um, and Maxim Galkin, he got all the ladies, man. He got all the ladies because he made them fucking laugh. Not because he was attractive or anything, albeit he did have the, the cool hairstyle. He made the ladies laugh. And I was like, so that's how you get the ladies, right? For a while, it was Bruce Lee. Long time, still is, still is. Muhammad Ali. Elvis Presley, not so much as a role model, more like, ah, I wish I could like look like that, you know, rock star looking guy. I did my hair like him for the longest time. Arnold Schwarzenegger is the biggest role model, especially right now. He's also a big role model to my father too, and I think he's the ideal, ideal role model, not just because he's this big buff guy. Man came to this country with nothing, worked his ass off. I'm not an immigrant, but coming from the son of an immigrant, or coming as the son of an immigrant. You look up to people like that because you know, like you can, when you're built like that, yeah. nothing in life will ever stop you. Yeah. Um, well, it's going to sound very typical, but definitely my um, parents. That is not a typical answer that I've gotten in this documentary so far. You'd really? Be you'd be surprised. Definitely my parents. I didn't realize a lot until like maybe when I went away for school. Like I think two years ago, I literally just started like, you know, because before it would be like some like celebrity or something. But now I just realized they sacrificed so much. Where are you going? My grandma. I've always looked up to my grandma. I mean, she's always been my best friend. But she's like, she's always known like when to put her foot down, you know, um, when I get maybe like I get a little bit too playful or it's like, like I'm still your grandma after all. Her, her husband died when he was 50 and I was born when she was 49. So like, you know, like it all happened like really quickly and she had to come here. Um, I don't think, I don't think she even went to his funeral. It was just like, it was a lot going on and she still managed to like fight through it and, 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 and be there for, for her family. And, you know, her son died when he was 10, like my, my mom's uh, brother. She's a very strong woman and especially surviving the frickin' Soviet Union, like, you know? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I just realized how much they like sacrifice. Like, I think it opened up my eyes when I realized I want to become an MD. My dad was the best doc dermatologist in Ukraine, hands down. He still has patients calling me. He literally had the president as a patient, like everybody can possibly think of. He's like one of those like well-known, amazing dermatologists. My mom was a great pediatrician. They start off from nothing. My dad, my mom used to like probably clean houses from the beginning when we moved just to get some money. And my dad, he was working as a masseuse, like he gave massages. And now they both just recently, like a year ago, they both became um, registered nurses which is very good for them because they had to take an exam and stuff. And like, I saw how hard they were struggling. Like English for them obviously isn't great, but it's still there. For, like, for me, it's not very difficult because I moved here when I was young. And my brother was having a difficult time at age 18. So can you imagine like somebody at 40, what they're going through? I'm having three little kids that don't speak English. They don't have a, they don't have a full-time job. Like how do you even find a place to live here when you don't know anybody, you know? They had that for 20 years, 30 years. They had a status in Ukraine. And we had a great money in Ukraine too, and just to leave it all, you know? And move here for like for what when you don't even know anything here anybody here like there's nothing to offer here for you у папиного папа его папу убили то есть он был во второй мировой войне его его папу убили поэтому у моего дедушки был просто его мама и потом ее потом новый папа появился война началась и они уехали на в село на да на не на дачу но к, к тете в село ну, обе бабушки родились после войны, да. поэтому их э, повезло, им, да. Да, им, им повезло, но им все равно надо было жить в Советском Союзе после Второй мировой войны. То есть они знали, что такое голод, они знали, что такое холод. Поэтому, когда я к ним прихожу, они все время хотят, чтобы мне было тепло и чтобы я был сыт. Ну, так, чтобы прожить в стране после войны, здесь никто это не знает. 
кроме тех, которые сюда приехали. Вот именно. Вот именно. Это огромная ценность. Это, наверное, самая ценная. In English you have the saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Да, поэтому я все время благодарен, когда я ем. Если я наедаюсь, я не выбрасываю, я просто с собой беру. Да, или просто упаковал и завтра там доел. Что-нибудь такое. На завтрак. Да, на завтрак, типа этого. Да, я очень тоже не люблю еду. А... Еду выбрасывать мне не нравится. Да. Каждый раз, когда я вижу, что друзья выбрасывают еду, говорят, да, 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 давай сюда. Что того, что мы немного того. Ты считаешь себя русским или американцем? Или какая-нибудь смесь? Если мне кто-то спрашивает, я себя считаю как русский из Бруклина. Понимаешь, это как новое поколение появилось после того, как многие сюда приехали из Советского Союза. Новое поколение, я считаю, типа как мы все, которые родились в Бруклине или в Нью-Йорке. Можно сказать, что мы Нью-Йорк Russians, Бруклин Russians. Но я себе не считаю ни русским, ни американским не американским, понимаешь, просто как человек себя считаю. Я сам не знаю, где, ну, мои корни, если я крымский татарин, если я русский, если я то, если я то, понимаешь. Я особо просто себя считаю как человек. Ты вот я вот сидел, сам думал а, несколько недель назад, но ну, что я буду делать в жизни, например, вот что я буду делать? Я... Хочу говорить, что я американец, я люблю эту страну, знаешь, она мне дала столько, столько, столько шансов. Все, что у нас есть. Все, что у нас есть в этой стране, Правильно. Оно, оно здесь сделано. Да-да. Знаешь, то есть здесь столько много разных вещей, где, которые в Украине я бы не нашел, которые в Украине я бы, наверное, ни разу не видел, даже не думал, что они существуют. Но я еще думаю, как бы моя жизнь была, если бы был еще в Киеве. Я это думаю. То об этом думаю я, постоянно. То есть, да. да, я плавал, да, я играл в теннис, да, я играл в волейбол. Я бы, наверное, то же самое делал в Киеве. Если я здесь умный, там я бы тоже был умный. Если я здесь красивый, там бы я тоже был красивый. Красавчик вообще. Ну, да, да, да. Если, если я высокий здесь, там бы я тоже был высокий. Если я смешной здесь, я бы там тоже был смешной. Понимаешь, ну как, как бы... Как, как, какого цвета вот этот цветок бы превратился, понимаешь? У меня там мой дядя живет, он получил свой докторат в, в инженер, как инженер, то есть офигенно умный. Если бы я жил в том же городе, как и он, что бы я делал со своей жизнью? Как бы я в школе учился? Какие бы девушки мне там нравились, понимаешь? То есть у меня столько вопросов, что я буду делать для этой страны? What can I do for this country? Знаешь, что, что я могу сделать? Да. Um, надо жить в сегодняшнем моменте, в этой минуте, в этой секунде, каждой секунде. А, это самое главное. И вот я это думаю, в это верю. Mm. Я тоже верю. Надо все время смотреть под ноги. Потому что если, если ты смотришь вперед, ты упадешь. Если ты смотришь, если ты смотришь назад, ты в что-то войдешь. Mm. А если, Мудро. Ты, да, если ты смотришь под ноги, то окей, ты не упадешь, ты не подскользнешься. Ты не... You know, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. Ты не чувствуешь себя как американка? Нет. Полностью. Ты чувствуешь, что это делает тебя сильнее, чем американка? Или ниже? Сильнее. Да? А почему? Я много делаю. Я, я много чего делаю. Я и теннис занимаюсь, и у меня double major, у меня и minor, я и работаю. А, у меня просто нет времени ничего делать. Я всегда работаю, всегда работаю. Это как мои родители мне так сделали, чтобы я всегда работала. И я знаю из-за этого, я буду, у меня очень хороший, у меня bright future. Потому что, значит, I, I don't give up, у меня будет что-то там передо мной, какой-то, я не знаю, obstacle. И ну, как русский, я через, через него вперед на мины. Вперед пойду, да. Ну вот у меня подруга американская, но... Она как-то слабая, я думаю. Почему? Like, Почему ты с ней дружишь, если она слабая? Эй, я ее люблю, но... Я думаю, это тоже очень сильно влияет на... Ну, for example, как, как mental health, да? У русских... Arguably, у нас самый ужасный mental health. <laughs> um, потому что 
ну, номер один, у, не, у нас такое нету. У нас проблемы, так и нету. И вот моя мама всегда говорит, для американцев есть это имя для все. Для вот, for example, depression. У депрессия. О, у русских это просто жизнь. Это просто жизнь. Obligatory for me to have a better life. Um, which is true. But I guess the main reason is because my uncle convinced them. He was like, America's great, America's great. And they were like, fuck it, why not? Because apparently, according to my mom, even like when I was born, they had no intention of moving to America. Then five months later, they're on the airplane moving here, you know? Um, how do you feel about the fact that you never had a say in it and you're here now? I mean, I'm grateful that they came here. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like, you know, I've, there's, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm like very certain that there's a lot of things that I've done here that would just not cut it in Ukraine. You know, like, um, they say America is the land of the free, the home of the brave. I say no. I say America is the land of second chances. Long story short, I didn't do well in my first year of college, and I had to leave, transfer to BMCC. If I failed in university in Ukraine, that's it. That's it. Period. I have no more chance. I have, there goes my shot at a higher, uh, at a higher education. But I am grateful. Period. Like point blank. Period. I am grateful that they came here. Если бы деньги и время, это не вопрос для тебя. Где бы ты хотел жить и почему? Когда маленьким был. Когда я ушел с Бруклина, я всегда мечтал вернуться и жить полностью, всю жизнь просто остаться в Бруклине. Я сейчас вернулся в Бруклин, и я люблю свой город. Но я сейчас знаю, что, наверное, там особо жить всю жизнь, не знаю. Если хотел бы, наверное, блин, в Италию. Особо серьезно я не знаю где бы хотел жить, если все угодно было. Главное, чтобы было спокойно, тишина. Если хотел бы уехать от тишине в город, слушай, чтобы не было далеко, ну, главное, чтобы было возле моря. Да. Я думаю. If you had the choice and the means to live wherever you want, where would it be? I think about that every day. I still don't know how I'd answer that. On one end, I'd want to do something more homeland, you know, like go go back to Crimea or, or Russia or wherever, you know, my roots are, just because I feel like it would it would feel right, you know, be surrounded by your own people, by your own culture. Like as culturally as I am Russian, or you know, whatever you want to call it, Russian really, yeah, just. I, I couldn't, I know I couldn't live, live there, you know? Если с семьей, то я бы хотел быть в этой стране. Да. С семьей, да, я бы хотел mm -hmm. быть в этой стране, потому что здесь... Uh, много возможностей. Много возможностей, да. Да, да. Манхэттен. Манхэттен? А пентхаус. Пентхаус. И Манхэттен. It's the dream. I'll get there one day when I'm a doctor, but just not yet. Give me like 15 more years, guys. I'll be there. Мне нравится Нью-Йорк, я обожаю Нью-Йорк. Как бы ты хотел воспитать своих детей в будущем? Я об этом каждый день думаю, чтобы они были сильны, самостоятельны. Ну, всегда, если у меня больше одного будет, чтобы они всегда друг другу помогали, Конечно. или если, или если у меня даже один будет, или больше. Чтобы они... А вдруг будет меньше, чем один? Ну, больше, чем ноль. Больше, чем ноль. Да, ну, мы, я слышал, да. Чтобы они были самостоятельными в первом очереди. Но чтобы они всегда знали, что я буду там для все, что... Все угодно. Что я никогда не разозлюсь. Или даже если я буду злой или злым, я, я это не покажу. Это не... Это не будет твоя самая главная черта. 
понимаю. Да, да. я понял. Ты будешь их воспитывать как американцев или как русских? No, Потому как что... Русские. Да? Как русские. I mean, в русскую школу, в рус... с русской едой? В русскую школу я не думаю. А... Но они точно будут знать русский язык. Mm -hmm. да, я надеюсь, что лучше, чем я. <laughs> а... То, что они будут знать русский язык. Я не хочу, чтобы они были так такие, знаешь, ну, пошлые, simplistic, да. как эти, как американцы. Они должны все знать, они должны все видеть. So, точно не как американцы. Я горжусь о том, что я могу сейчас работать в трудной, в самой трудной работе, которая у меня есть сейчас. И что я давно, когда маленьким был, до сих пор работал, всегда был занят, чем-то чем занимался, или с музыкой, или на карате, или на, на лодках, когда я работал, когда мне было 14 лет. Ага. Каждый день работал, зарабатывал свои деньги, мог быть самостоятельным. Пока мне мало чем, чем гордиться, ну... Но... Я думаю, тебе не мало чем гордиться. Надо просто помнить, что у тебя есть. What would you suggest to uh, immigrants coming to America and to New York? I just feel like you try to push so much all at once and make everything, everything like work out that you, it's out of your control, really. You're like a little, like you're a little person thrown into a big city. Like, so you, it's all about you, how you like make things around you, how you have a perspective on the world. Like you have to aim for something, you have to reach for something, but you have to go with the flow. Like, take baby steps like you can't become you can't become a lawyer or a doctor or go into like a lot of professional fields really without finishing college but before you even get to college you have to do elementary school middle school and high school and you have your own many obstacles at the time so you have to sacrifice something in order to get something back find your people stay with them always stay connected to who you are no matter what fight for that whatever that means for you like for me that means being Russian being with my grandmother who also loves her culture and our culture, being with other people like you who helped me stay within that, like, yes, we are Russian, we are brothers in that, we can do our cultural things together. We could talk in the same language, we can listen to the same music, and even if we don't like the same songs, I can understand, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's, the, that, that's one of the most important, especially for me experience the complete opposite of that and that especially in New York when you have all these other cultures and other wonderful people just just everywhere go meet them learn something new live life learn to realize that you are not the only one in your culture or your heritage and your what you bring to the table is not the only thing on that table you know especially here learn about a lot a lot of other people and if you don't learn about it in school you will learn about it talking to people go out there meet people this is the perfect place to do that okay well when, would you want to go back and visit ukraine yeah uh, family like thing is like sure whatever i identify as whatever my ethnicity is sure but ukraine is still like my, my home you know what yeah. i mean i was born there i have okay one of my most vivid memories of ukraine is the final two days that i was there mm -hmm. the, okay i remember the last time i saw my sister that was 13 plus years ago her name is vlada so i haven't seen her since then she was just going to college when i was leaving so the plan was you finish then you come here to america obviously the war happened yeah. They stopped giving out visas, time went by, she started her own family. I hug her, and she's like, I won't see you for a very long time. I'm like, okay, I didn't really understand what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. I was eight years old, I was just like, okay, we're going on a trip, woo! Mm -hmm. I had no concept of, I'm moving, like I'm not coming back here anymore. And then we got on the train, these like really old blue trains that are all over Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And um, man, like I remember, I for, I was eight years old and I understood why the Ukrainian flag was blue and yellow. <laughs> We're driving through the countryside, like infinite, 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 endless sunflower fields, yellow, oh, wow. perfect blue sky, not a cloud. I'm like, oh, that's the Ukrainian flag, mom. She's like, yeah, very yeah. good. 
I'm like, holy, <laughs> that's so perfect. Like, what other country has that? You know what I mean? And it's I know. just so gorgeous. And I know. and the people are great. You know what I mean? Like, it it's just great. it's just sad. Oh. Did we stop recording? What's going on? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs>